Adventures of the Shadow are on the air, brought to you each week at this time by your neighborhood blue coal dealer. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Protect yourself against the quick weather changes that are so common this time of the year by heating your home with blue coal. You'll find this fine fuel gives you new and greater satisfaction because it's especially prepared for home heating. It's delivered to your home in just the right size for greatest efficiency. That means warmth even on the coldest days. It means money saved, too, on fuel costs. Remember, when you buy blue coal, you save money by buying the best. Get in touch with your neighborhood blue coal dealer tomorrow and have him fill your bin with the always clean and dependable blue coal. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Several years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The secret of hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Death Gives an Encore. (laughs) As the surgeon knows, the phenomenon called life is a delicate balance. To tamper with that balance is to upset it, and to upset it is to create a monster, neither living nor dead. A creature with no conscience, no mind of its own, but obeying the will of its bloodthirsty master. This is the story of a scientist who walked a road no mortal man dare travel. And in conclusion, gentlemen of the Biologist Society... May I say that I have actually seen cases of this living surgery in the Orient. I have seen whole parts of bodies transplanted successfully. Vital organs removed from one person and grafted onto another. Professor Gando, Professor Gando, may I say you leave so much to the imagination. Are you implying that I... I lie, Professor Wallace. I'm not implying. I say that you're a fraud and have no business here addressing a group of scientists. I quite agree with that, yes. Well, Gondo, where is the proof of your statements on living surgery? For ten years, Wallace, you have attempted to ruin me. I have given you no reason, no cause for these unjustified attacks on me. Proof? Where's your proof? You have seen my collection of photographs of actual cases. Fakes, every one of them. You'll pay for this, Professor Wallace. I might add that you're a much better photographer than you are a man of science. (laughs) Yes, you'll pay for this, Professor Wallace. You'll pay. Read all about it. Knife for Williams dies tonight in chair. Knife for Williams to be executed tonight. Read all about it. This is the end of the road for you, Williams. Have you any last words? Any last requests? Yeah, Warden. Free my hands and give me a knife. I see, Williams. Still unrepentant. May the Lord see fit to pardon your sins. All right. Knife for Williams is dead. Hello, Commissioner Weston speaking. Hello, Commissioner Weston. This is Warden Sloan of the state prison speaking. Yes, Warden, yes. Commissioner Knifer Williams' body was placed in the prison morgue and... Did you call me at four o'clock in the morning to tell me that? No, sir. 
What then? His hands, Commissioner. His hands have been amputated. Amputated? They're missing. Good Lord, missing. Why? I don't know, sir. It looks like the job of a skilled surgeon. In some way, someone got into the morgue and mutilated William's body. Mr. Bartolini's not in his dressing room, Mr. McManus. Hey. I went in to check on his costumes. Not there? No, sir. What is Trapeze Act as the star act on the bill? Now, what can we tell the audience? Well, that's your business, well, sir. Well, you know they only come to see Bartolini's triple somersault in midair. Everything's gone from his dressing room, sir. Flew the coupe, eh? Well, I don't know, sir. There's only a large wooden box there. Box? Well, let me see it. Come on. You know, Mr. McManus... I have a strange feeling about this. There's been a man... Oh, here it is, Mr. McManus. Hmm. Sort of looks like a small coffin, don't it? Yeah. Yeah, it does. I'm going to open that box. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? There's a note attached to the side. Uh? It says, Bartolini won't need these anymore. It's unsigned. I don't get it. Open the box. All right. <gasps> oh! Just his arms. Bartolini's two arms in the box. Amputated at the shoulder. I don't suppose you remember me, Mr. Cranston. I met you several years ago in the Orient. Well, as a matter of fact, Professor Wallace, I remember you quite well. You were doing research work in tropical diseases at the time. Yes, that's quite right. And if I'm not mistaken, you are something of a student of criminology. Oh, why? Well, it's for that reason that I've asked you here tonight. Well, criminology is just a hobby, Professor Wallace, but I am very much interested in the subject. That's a masterpiece of understatement. <laughs> what was that? Oh, nothing. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Please go on. Oh, yes. Well, to come to the point... What would you say, Mr. Cranston, if I were to tell you that I have for the last several years been driving a man systematically insane. What are you what? saying? Now, wait, please, hear me out. First, hear my reasons before you condemn me. Please go on. I assure you my motives are above censure when judged in the light of medical science. Drive a man insane? Well, do you think that by doing that that you're helping mankind? Yes, I do, Miss Lane. See, this man's brain was warped before he ever crossed my path. I immediately recognized the danger in allowing this man to continue with his diabolical experiments. Experiments with living bodies. Oh, Lamar. I don't believe I quite understand, Professor Wallace. Experiments with living surgery, Mr. Cranston. The grafting of arms and legs and vital organs from one body to another. Oh. The man's name is Gondo, a brilliant biologist whose intense work in the field of biological research twisted his mind. Uh -huh. There's no telling what horrible crime he might not commit in his effort to prove his theories. Well, why wasn't some effort made to cure him? Cure is out of the question, Miss Lane. That horrible obsession is beyond medical aid. Oh, I see. So my sole purpose was to make Professor Gondo commit some act of violence toward me. Then I could have him sent away to some institution where he'd be safe. And at last, I think I have succeeded. Read this note I just received. Mm -hmm. What does it say, Lamont? My brain against yours, Professor. The body of a skilled gymnast, and in a murderer's hand, cold steel, thirsting for your blood. Tonight. Well, it's unsigned. It's undoubtedly from my friend, Gondo. Well, you don't seem very much upset by that threatening note, Professor Wallace. Well, Miss Lane, my apartment here is 22 floors off the street, and the halls are guarded by private detectives. Lamont, and... look! Where? Look out the window over there. I saw someone on the window ledge of the building across the court. Why, that's impossible. There's not enough ledge on those windows for a cat to walk on. I can't see anybody. It's too dark. Anyway. Well, I'm sure I saw someone for a moment. Probably your nerves, Margo. I can't say. I blame you after hearing that. <laughs> what was that? It came from my study. My assistant, Peterson, is going over some notes of mine in there. Come on. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, oh no. Don't look, Margo. Peterson. He's dead, Christ. Stabbed through the throat with a knife. No, Wallace, not stabbed. The knife was thrown. And look, the window was slightly open at a level with his head. Throne. Miss Lane was right about seeing someone across the way. Uh, careful, Wallace. The killer may still be there. Look out! What was that? Another knife. There's a note attached to it. Read it, Prince. Yes. Fear festers like an evil disease. The first knife was to plant the infection. The next to drain your life's blood. Right, Cardona. Call me back here at Professor Wallace's apartment. 
well, Commissioner? It seems Miss Lane was right about seeing somebody across this court. My men have found a good set of fingerprints on the ledge of that window across there. Uh Uh-huh. They're checking through the files now. We were sure of that before you found the prints, Commissioner. Of course, Valdemir Gondos' fingerprints. And how do you know this guy Gondo sent Professor Wallace the note? It wasn't signed. He threatened me before. Oh, wait, wait. Step by step, Professor. Step by step. Now, while you're all sitting in here, Miss Lane sees somebody across the court, 20-some stories off the street and hanging on the ledge. Hanging on a ledge, mind you, like a fool monkey. Why, it'd have to be another Bartolini to do that. Bartolini? Yes, that's the name I was trying to remember. Bartolini, the great trapeze performer. So you think it's Bartolini, huh? It could have been, Commissioner. Yeah, yeah, it could have been, Miss Lane. However, it seems that somebody bumped Mr. Bartolini off some three weeks ago. Yes, that's it. And sent his arms back in a box. That mutilation slaying, do you remember it, Professor Wallace? Yes, his arms were severed at the shoulder. The rest of his body hasn't been found. Cranston, do you think there's a possibility that Gondo succeeded in his experiments? Now, oh, wait, I, I'll answer. It's probably for me. Hello? Yes, yeah, speaking. Oh, yes, Cardona, you checked the prints. All right. Well, whose are they? Whose? Said he check them again. You heard me check them again, and if you give me the same answer, you're fired. Ridiculous. Whose fingerprints were they, Commissioner? Dopes. In a fi- I'm going to clean out that whole fingerprint department. Whose prints were they? He said they were Nifa Williams' prints. And Nifa Williams died in the electric chair four weeks ago. Act two of Death Gives an Encore will continue in just a moment. Meanwhile... Here's a reminder to get in touch with your blue coal dealer so you'll be prepared for anything the weatherman has in store for you. You can keep your home at just exactly the temperature you want with blue coal. Comfortably warm and yet not too hot because blue coal burns evenly and smoothly. In fact, this superior home fuel is especially prepared, sized, and carefully graded for home use. Yes, it fits the requirements of your furnace. It's tailor-made for your home. That's why you're sure of complete satisfaction when you heat with blue coal. You not only get comfortable, dependable warmth, but besides that, this tested superior home fuel is a money saver. It burns so efficiently that you enjoy real economy with blue coal. Get in touch with your neighborhood blue coal dealer tomorrow. He's listed under the words blue coal in the yellow section of your classified phone directory. Now here's a special announcement about the Mystic Shadow Ring. This is an exotic white ring that holds light and afterward glows weirdly in the darkness. You can get this ring simply by sending 10 cents with your name and address to The Shadow, Post Office Box 5, Madison Square Station, New York City. Send in right away for your mystic shadow ring. Now, back to The Shadow. What on earth do you make of this whole business? Margot, I don't think Bartolini is dead. Everything points to the fact that Gondo was successful in his experiments. Well, then the creature I saw on that window ledge... May have been the trained acrobat Bartolini with the grafted arms of the Knifa Williams. Oh, but how could Gondo control the brain of his monster? I don't know that, Margot. But the Shadow is going to interview Professor Gondo in his laboratory. Perhaps he will find the answer there. Soon. Proof you wanted, eh? Well, proof you shall have. <laughs> well, Professor Gondo. What? I heard something. There's nobody here. You're wrong, Professor Gondo. The shadow is also here. Where? Where? I don't see anyone. The shadow cannot be seen by your eyes. Why did you come here? I want to know about your experiments in living surgery. Living surgery? Why do you want to know? An attempt was made on the life of Professor Wallace tonight. You are under suspicion. Suspicion? Do you admit, Professor Gondo, I you... do not admit anything, Shadow. But I can tell you frankly, I would like to see him dead. I hate him. And you tried to kill him? No. No, Shadow. If I were to kill Professor Wallace... Mind you, I say if. 
It would be with these two hands. And not the hands of Knifer Williams grafted to the body of Bartolini, grafted by you as an instrument of your revenge? You speak in riddles, Shadow. I do not understand. Perhaps you find it convenient not to understand, Gondo. What's that? Someone is tapping on my window. Gondo, stay away from that window. I must see what it is. There is no one here. Come away from that window. (laughs) Gondo! Dead. Killed by a thrown knife. Professor Gondo, third victim of fiendish knife murderer. Police request anyone with possible clues to identity of murderer to come forward. Police request anyone with possible, possible clues, clues to identity, to identity of, murderer of murderer to come forward. forward. Commissioner Weston stated this morning that, in his opinion, the killings have not reached an end. The murderer said he will attempt attempt to cover his tracks by killing anyone. Whom he believes can reveal him. Reveal him. Yes, yes, of course. Hello, operator. Get me police headquarters immediately. Oh, I hope it isn't too late. Hello, police. I must speak to Commissioner Weston. Hurry, please. I think I can identify the knife murderer. Yes. Well, I'm the wardrobe mistress for Romero Brothers Circus. And I remember the man who was last seen with Mr. Bartolini. And if I'm in danger because of that... What? Oh, yes, I'd know him in a minute. He knew Mr. Bartolini and was always around. He seemed to take an unusual interest in Mr. Bartolini. Mr. Bartolini! You... You are going to die, Mrs. Donna. You are going to die. Mr. Bartolini... That knife? What are you going to do with that knife? I must kill you. No. You must be put out of the way. Oh, Mr. Bartolini, what have I ever done to you? Oh, please. No! No, don't throw that knife! Ah! I tell you, Cranston, I was talking to the woman on the phone when it happened. She was just going to give me a description of the murderer when she met her death. A knife in her throat. Now, what I can't understand is her calling out Bartolini's name. Bartolini? Well, Lamont, then you were right about his not being dead. Begins to look that way, Margot. Not dead. Bartolini's amputated arms were sent back in a box. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's dead. Now, don't try to tell me my business. I say that there have been four murders. Bartolini, Peterson, Gondo, and now Mrs. Dorner, the wardrobe mistress at the circus. You're leaving out something very important, Commissioner. Yeah, you fascinate me, my amateur sleuth. What is it? Not it, Commissioner. Knifer Williams. Knifer Williams was executed four weeks before Peterson was murdered. Fingerprints don't lie, Commissioner. Well, somebody is. Have you ever heard of living surgery, Commissioner? (laughs) Look, Cranston, Professor Wallace told me all about that business of grafting arms and legs from one person to another. He says it's the bunk. Still doesn't believe it, eh? Of course not. Tell me, Commissioner, since Gondo's death, has Professor Wallace asked you to have the police guard removed? Uh, Yes, he just... Called about an hour ago and said he wouldn't need them anymore. And you called them off? Certainly. Why shouldn't I? Because, Commissioner, I have reason to believe that the murderer will strike again tonight. Well, Mr. Cranston, Miss Lane, you've searched my apartment and laboratory from one end to the other. You're satisfied now there's no one lurking here? Satisfied isn't the word. I'm relieved. But surely, since Gondo's dead, Mr. Cranston, there's nothing for me to fear. Well, don't forget that Mrs. Dorner, the wardrobe mistress, was killed after Gondo. Mm. And by the same murderer. I, uh, I can't help admiring your bravery, Professor Wallace. But aren't you overlooking the facts? Yes, yes, that is quite true. In the mind of this monster, the hypnotic thought may still be implanted to murder you. Yes, that's very true, Mr. Cranston. Well, in that event, is there anything else here in my apartment you'd care to examine? Any place where the killer may be hiding? Well, come to think of it, I did notice a fire escape off one of the back rooms. Do you mind if I look it over? No, no, please go right ahead. Uh, wait here, Margot. I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, Lamont. Don't be gone too long. I won't. It's a very clever young man, Miss Lane. Very clever. Well, he has a way of tracking down a criminal, no matter how brilliant or how cunning. Yes, I suspected as much. You'll pardon me, Miss Lane, but I've been looking at your hands. You're a musician, aren't you? (laughs) Well, I play the piano after a fashion. Just after a fashion? Well, that's too bad. With your hands, you should play magnificently. Uh, Yes? Well, thank you. Don't thank me yet. What do you mean? I'm going to give you the name of a very fine piano teacher. 
Actually, I think I have his card right here in the desk. I'm not sure I have it someplace. I... Oh, hello, look at this. Well, what a strange-looking bottle. It's carb jade, isn't it? Yes, I picked it up in my travels in the Orient. It contains a very rare and exotic perfume. <laughs> I've forgotten all about it. It must have been in the drawer here. Here. It's yours. Oh, no, I couldn't accept it. Oh, please, it. I insist. I haven't any use for it. You may find it very interesting. Well, how nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Smell it. It has a very delicate, very wonderful scent. Mmm. Mmm, it's wonderful. I... Wonderful. I neglected to tell you, my dear Miss Lane, that it is a powerful hypnotic drug as well. Now, Miss Lane, you're going to aid me. Yes, aid me to get rid of your friend Lamont Cranston. Now listen to me and obey. You must obey every command. Yes. Yes, I must obey. Good, the drug is working well. Now to release my killer. See, I press the button, and the panel slides open. Your clever friend Cranston overlooked that when he searched this apartment. Bartolini, come. I have another little job for you. I hear you, master. Good. Now for the final ironical touch, the final sardonic gesture. Miss Lane, you will send this monster after Lamont Cranston. No. You will command him to destroy him. No. Command him. You... We'll go to the fire escape. Yes. Yes. You will find a knife in your hand. Yes, the knife. Then you will... You will... Kill him. Uh, you will kill him. <laughs> good, good. You hear your orders, Bartolini? I hear. I hear. Then carry them out. Yes, master. <laughs> escape punishment for your crimes, Professor Wallace. What? Who said that? The shadow, Professor Wallace. You can't see me because I've cast a hypnotic mist over your mind. Shadow? It was a brilliant plan of yours, Wallace, to accuse Gondo of the murders, to make it appear that he was the creator of this monster with the body of Bartolini and the arms of Knifer Williams when it was you. <laughs> then to make it look as if you were the target of the attack rather than the attacker. And now you know, Shadow, I ordered my killer here to murder Gondo and Peterson and then Mrs. Dollar, yes. Tracks are well covered, too. Not well enough to deceive the shadow. Don't you understand, shadow? You are to be the last link in the chain, the last one to die. Professor Wallace, this is the end of your criminal career. Let's drop this pretense, Mr. Cranston. Cranston? Yes, I can see you quite well. You forget that I, too, know something of hypnosis. You're my prisoner. You're going to die along with your friend Miss Lane here. All except her hands, which I shall use again. So... It is to be a contest between the power of darkness and light, Professor Wallace. And the dark shall win, Mr. Cranston. I'll make the first move in our mental chess game. Bartolini, grab her. Hold her. Yes, Master. Margo. There, Master. I've got her. Margo. Make one move and she dies, Mr. Cranston. Up on the window ledge with her, Bartolini. Yes, Master. Uh, you see how helpless you are, Shadow? One move from you and I'll order Bartolini to plunge from that window with her. Twenty-two stories to the street. Bartolini, come down from that ledge. There's a cloud over your mind. Oh. This man is evil. He has made you do evil things. Who speaks to me? I speak to you, your master. I command you to hear only my voice. Yes. Obey only my commands. Yes. Bartolini, yes. listen to me. Mm. You are a man, not a slave. Mm. I speak to the man, Bartolini. Mm. Not to the monster created by Professor Wallace. Bartolini. Rebel. Rebel against him. Yes. Yes, I will try. No. Try. No, you cannot disobey me. I will help you, Bartolini. Come down from that ledge. Yes. Put Miss Lane yes. down safely. Yes. I must fight. No, Bartolini. Yes, I will put her down safely, Shadow. Bartolini! I have broken your power over his mind, Wallace. The power of good wind. Not yet, Shadow. You may control his mind, but the hands of Knifer Williams will act for me. Bartolini, the knife. Hmm. The knife in the hands of the knifer. Kill the Shadow. You can see him. Throw your knife. Yes, a knife in my hands. But these are not my hands. They feel strange to me. Kill him, Bartolini. As if they had a life of their own. Kill him. The shadow can be seen by you. I can't see anything but you. You. You taught me to use these hands to kill. Now I use them to kill you. No, no, no. Don't throw that knife. Stop, Bartolini. No. I've killed him. These hands have killed him. Bartolini, listen to me. No. I have no control over them. They don't belong to me. They're killer's hands. I must get away. I am Bartolini, the great trapeze artist. I can escape. Stay away from that escape. ledge. Escape. Look out. Escape. You're 
they do stories about the streets. <laughs> is to upset it, and to upset it is to create a monster. This was the story of a scientist who walked a road no mortal man dare travel. In just a moment, we'll bring you a special feature of America at War. But first, we present John Barclay, Blue Coal's home heating expert. Mr. Barclay. Thank you, Ken Roberts, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Most of you folks drive cars, I take it. But I'll wager that you wouldn't think of driving any car unless you were sure the accelerator and brakes were in good operating condition. That's common sense, because they control the speed of the car. Well, in heating your home, the dampers on your furnace should be operated correctly, for these dampers control the burning speed of your fire. So if you aren't sure how to set the dampers for best results, and if you're not getting your money's worth in real heating comfort, call your neighborhood blue coal dealer. He'll be glad to send his John Barclay service man around to inspect your furnace. And remember, friends, this man has been trained in economical home heating. He'll look your furnace over and tell you frankly if adjustments are needed to improve its operation. What's more, he'll show you how to regulate your dampers properly. You see... He is genuinely interested in your getting satisfactory results and using the smallest possible amount of fuel. And folks, this is an exclusive blue coal service. If you have any heating problem, call your friendly neighborhood blue coal dealer. You'll find him courteous and anxious to cooperate. I thank you. The Shadow Program is based on a story copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Somewhere off the east coast of the United States, a ship is creeping forward in darkness. And with good reason. Like assassins in the night, enemy submarines stalk the merchant ships and close in for the kill. Bomber torpedo tubes ready. Stand by to fire on order. Ach, Himmel, what's this? Coast Guard approaching. Dive. Dive, you hear me? United States Coast Guard ship is almost over us. We're trapped. United States Coast Guard patrol reporting. Sighted submarine. Submarine sunk. The United States Coast Guard packs a deadly wallop, and the Axis knows it like to take a good crack at the axis yourself, then join the Coast Guard. You'll have plenty of action, plenty of thrills, and the sure knowledge that you're doing your bit for your country and the front lines of defense. If you are qualified as a machinist, carpenter, cook, or yeoman, you may get immediate petty officer rating. See your nearest Coast Guard recruiting station right away. Teach the axis that for nations, just as for men, the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. Be sure to listen. And be sure to phone your neighborhood blue coal dealer for greater heating comfort at less cost. Remember, keep the home fires burning with blue coal. This story was...